John, I just wanted to comment on the incredible job that whoever did trimming your beard did. Who did that? Who did this? Who, who can I thank for such a fabulous trim job? Actually, it's Jen. Jen, our, uh, our Putzfrau. No kidding. Yeah. She is a gifted beard trimmer also. So please, we'll extend. What's her last name? We need to give her a shout out. Conine, Jen Conine. Jen Conine kicks some serious beard trimming butt, I would say. Can we, can uh, we actually uh, get a copy of this so I can show it to her? Well, yeah, we're going to use this for sure. <laughs> Not sure where yet. Um, Good. All right. So your former student, Christian Patel, commented on Grammar Geezer's episode 32, John's Te Teaching Philosophy, part one. And he said, uh, your former students are watching, smiley face. Also, would love to have an episode about John's favorite quotes. Oh, yeah. So do you have them in front of you? Uh, hey, Pat. Okay. All right, so John's favorite quotes. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little background here. So there's two pages of quotes. Um, are these quotes you collected throughout your, your adult life, or did you have these things all baked when you were a sophomore in high school, or like where did no, these things come he from? No, heavens no. No, no, I, um, I came across them in certain uh, times in my life uh, when I was having the good times or bad times, and uh, as I uh, lost my faith uh, over the years um, and couldn't uh, uh, explain uh, that uh, <clears throat> the, the reward for all your my suffering and uh, trials and tribulations uh, is not cannot be a heaven or a hell for punishment so i had to find some way to figure out how other people who have been in similar situations as i have have, have dealt with uh, the uh, ups and downs of life's journey so then i as i've i read a lot over my years and i've came across many many things uh, that have um, help me explain <clears throat> situations and life's uh, ups and downs. So let's take a look at, there's probably too many to cover if we we're going to hammer through them one by one. But I don't know if there are particular ones that you lead with. Now, quid pro quo, um, scratch your itch, we've got whole episodes on those two. Yeah, um, well, of course. But, uh, but there's other ones, you know. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods. They kill they us kill for their sport. They kill us for their sport, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you have, most people have something going wrong in their lives. And uh, when it happens, how are you going to explain it? You know, why me? Why me? Well, why not you, asshole? You know what I mean? Uh, it's just there's no, there's no way to explain what happens to you. You just have to, is, you know, yeah. roll with the punches. And I think if you can see what Shakespeare thought about it or someone else thought about it. Uh, recently, I've been thinking a lot about the uh, political situation, and we don't want to get involved in this, but, uh, and both sides. Um, I was thinking about that quote, which I'll probably uh, fuck up from, uh, from um, uh, W.B. Yeats's wonderful, wonderful poem. I don't know if you're familiar with it, called The Second Coming. Have you familiar no. with that? It starts out, I don't know, I'll get it wrong, but something widening, widening, and a widening hegira. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. And the next line is, things fall apart, the center cannot hold. And I'm thinking about that as, as far as a, in our government, in our society. And that, by the way, two or three down, lines down is, one of the, is a quote that should... Um, Everybody should, I'm losing my voice again, <clears throat> but everybody should know. Unfortunately, I haven't got it handy, but it's something like, uh, uh, oh, what is that one? It'll come to me. But it's about, it's about our country and our society and our civilization. Uh, what is that one? The best, the best, the best lack convention the worst are motivated by intense passion or something like that. And I just think it, these quotes keep coming to my mind. And of course, I haven't looked at that quote in years from that wonderful poem, but it's, uh, to me, uh, that poem explains a lot about the uh, devolution, what we're seeing now 
of our society and of our world. So anyway, I don't know why I brought that up, but quotes of other people have meant a lot to me. As well, and you mentioned... My life. And by the way, yeah. I want to make it clear. I made it clear. I don't proselytize my, my beliefs or my quotes to people. When I have, I hand these quotes out at the end of the semester, either at the my class potluck at the end of the semester, last day of class, or the last week of classes after semester's basically over, or on the last day of class. And I say, uh, these are quotes that have helped me as I've gone through this veil of tears, okay? And by the way, I'm the most op optimistic guy in the world. I talk about tragedy and, uh, you know, veil of tears and ups and downs and woe to wealth and back again we go, Chaucer. Um, but um, I'm really an optimistic guy, but nonetheless, um, I'm, everybody's optimistic and pessimistic. When I get pessimistic, I think about how other people have handled the situation that I'm in, and they have sustained me. Yeah. Well, you've got chance govern our li governs our lives, not wisdom, which was the mm -hmm. Robert Burton Anatomy of Mel Melancholy quote, which is, as flies are and, and, and boys, are we forgot? I mean, it's... Well, wait, it, I want to comment, comment on one. I don't think that's... Yeah, I don't think it's in my list of quotes, but it's from Robert Burton's... Uh, Anatomy and Melancholy, 5th edition, I think, 15, uh, 16, 59, I don't know, 5th edition for sure. But uh, I think about this as I think about uh, 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 Trump. Uh, great wit and wealth seldom go together. I love that. Our wealthy viewers may take offense to that. So, But, <laughs> but it's probably, you know, hey... So what else? Um, it is only through indignity that man rises to dignity. Oh, yeah, that Francis Bacon of a great place. A uh, little tiny essay. Everybody should, anybody that's in a position of leadership, anybody should read that essay because it's about leadership and about how you, you handle things. But uh, it's also a wonderful, uh, in life, uh, you know, you're, gonna, uh, you're not going to be the smartest man in the room, but sometimes you're not the dumbest. And sometimes... You'll find yourself working with creeps, idiots, uh, immoral people. And how do you justify that? You know, how do you kiss others' ass without, you know, revolting and done, say things I've said to my supervisors over the years? You just think of that quote, it is only through indignity that man rises to dignity. Now, you never compromise your moral values, but you have to kiss a lot of ass to get ahead, and that's just the story of life. Sorry. Hmm. At least, that's the way I, at least that's the way I interpret Francis Bacon's uh, words. Yeah. Well, I think Francis Bacon initially, you know, he did some rewriting, but it said you'll have to kiss some ass, and then he changed it to the indignity thing, is my yeah, guess. By, that, by the way, that Francis Bacon is not the artist, the painter. It's uh, back in the, you know, many people, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I've never made up my mind. I'm 81 years old, and I don't know, but many people, many scholars think that Francis Bacon was the only... Man, educated enough to be Shakespeare. You know that, right? Mm hmm Or Edward okay. de Vere or whatever. All right, ready? Yeah. I learned this at least from my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to, to lead the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Thoreau. And that's right. a more optimistic one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's Thoreau, Walden. You got a dream. You have to dream. You know what I mean? You've got to have goals. Maybe, uh, maybe it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy, the Pygmalion effect. Uh, you know, if you think something's going to work, if if you uh, have goals and you think this uh, project is going to be successful, if you work as if it's going to be successful, you know, there's a good chance you might succeed. And if you don't, you'll have no regrets because you busted your ass and you know was positive, were positive the entire time. So, uh, I like that one very much. Well, yeah. and related, I love all that. Yeah, I know you do. Ready? Uh, Whether you think you can or can't, you're probably right. That's attributed to Henry Ford and others. But it's yeah, the same idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. I always like that one. I always like to encourage my students to, uh, you know, it's a matter of, it's really a way of stating a self-fulfilling prophecy again, I think. You know, if you think you can do something, you, maybe you can. If you think you can't, you damn sure can't. So why not think positive? And that includes a relationship with uh, your lover or with your vocation, with your avocation, or what have you, you know? You're, well, it's, again, it's kind of like quid pro quo, you're rewarded a commensurate with the effort you put into something. And then, ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? 
That's Robert same. Browning. I know, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Same, exact same. Exact same idea. It's very course, interesting I because I, I don't. Yeah, okay. I, I would say a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what are other uh, intellectuals' uh, thoughts for? <laughs> Since I don't believe in heaven, and, but you know, you've got to find something to help you get through life, right? Now, but see, how, how do you get through? My dad got through life with, with liquor, right? I've seen other people get through life with, um, you know, drugs, illicit or scripture drugs with they scripts with they overuse, prescription drugs with they overuse. You've got to have something. Maybe you lean on your friends, your wife, your husband. Maybe you, uh, you know, lean on uh, music to to let you escape for a little while. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just found out that reading has always helped me escape, and I've always found um, the way other people have faced uh, life, the, the good and the bad, and mainly the mainly the bad, maybe the tragedies, because uh, you know that's that's mainly when I'm thinking about um, you know what was me. So I wonder why me, and I wonder to see how other you know people. There was a man named Boethius. No, well, I don't want to get into that. It's too complicated. Never mind. Forget about Boethius and his Come two on. sons. No. All right. Well, I, I, go ahead. It's a, <laughs> You want to talk about Boethius? No, I don't. I haven't talked about Boethius in many, many years. I think his book was called The Consolation of Philosophy, but um, anyway, I don't know. That could be somebody else. This is completely unscripted, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah. rest, rest assured, if I knew what I was talking about, I would have no idea what I'm talking about. Now, <laughs> register that. We're as prepared as we typically are. Yeah, true. Ready? Things are in the saddle and ride mankind. Ralph Waldo. No, this, yeah, this is uh, actually the, um, the, the motto of American society. This is what motivates. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, oh. I lost you. Hit you the play. side button. Hit, a, hit the space bar or just the, any key. Hi. You'll be I entered, no, it says enter password. Well, go ahead and enter the password. Hey, Pat! Please help. Okay. Heaven for the climate, hell for the company. Attributed to Mach is that yeah, Machiavelli potentially? I don't know. Yeah, I've heard it from so many people, but uh, you know, I'm always telling my friends who say, Oh yeah, you don't believe in God. So therefore you're not gonna get into heaven. Of course I always you know this very well, uh, you know, there's a belief that uh uh, pretty strong, long-held belief, like 2,000 years, that you have a soul. And uh, many people claim that dogs, you know, have no soul, so therefore they can't get into heaven. So why would I want to go into heaven if you have a dog? You know what I mean? Seriously. But uh, also, um, most of the people that I've been associated with that have told dirty jokes and uh, played basketball with and, uh, and been good friends of mine, many of them don't believe in God. And therefore... Um, we're going to have a good time in hell, but the climate in heaven is going to be so much better. <laughs> um, you know, nobody ever went. Old, it, oh, go ahead. It's an, it's an old joke about how the old guy um, walking with a dog, and he goes up to um, Saint Peter, the Golden Gate, and says, uh, "What comes with the dog?" He says, "I want to come in and get some water for my dog." And the uh, Saint Peter said, uh, "Well." Um, you can get some water for yourself, but we don't allow dogs in heaven. And the, the old beggar man says, well, tell me the direction to hell, you know, because he can take his dog with him. So that's like kind of like me. I could see you being in exactly that role. Yeah. Um, Nobody ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of the American people. Actually, a paraphrase. Yeah, H.L. Mencken. It's a paraphrase, as you as you yeah. note in your, in your quote list. By the way, I'm going to post this um, as a... In the notes of the video, I think so people can download it if they want. These, if that's okay with you, these PDFs that these these quotes came from. Oh, sure, of course. But yeah, that's not changed since Men Menken's day, day, rather. I don't think the, the <laughs> no. Okay. We're gonna wrap with this last quote here. It's there are other quotes on this sheet again. We're gonna post it. Um, I've been and I've been bouncing around. If I did not accomplish great things, I died in their. Pursuit, and that's Don Quixote's epitaph. By isn't isn't that one of <clears throat> that's that's actually uh, uh, what I want to put on my tombstone. He did not accomplish great things, but he died in their pursuit. And the thing about it is, I tried. You know, my novels, 
Yeah, no one likes them except me. Of course, I wrote for an audience of one, so I'm a great success. I like, I like them. And, Sorry, and, 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 two of us. That's okay. That's all right. And so the thing about it is, um, I, uh, I tried to accomplish great things. I tried, you know. And I've told you before in private conversations that uh, the man who sits in front of his TV and has a subscription for National Geographic and reads about the world and decides he wants to, sh let's, let's make, hey, in this sexist world we live in, let's say he or she. So it's like a schizophrenic personality. He doesn't know what he wants to be or she wants to be. But anyway, he or she sits in front of the TV, reads the National Geographic and decides he or she isn't as clumsy. He or she wants to go to uh, climb uh, Mount Everest. So he sits there and he thinks about it, he thinks about it, he reads about it, he wants to go and he goes to the local mountaineering store and he buys a, you know, I don't know, ski mask or something like that. And he goes back and he sits and thinks about it. He sees more films and more clips. Never does a thing. He's a failure. He's a failure. But now the person that uh, has National Geographic subscription and he, he or she starts exercising, running four or five miles, starts learning how to rock climb, and then starts taking lessons on the mountain climbing, and then uh, goes to save up all his or her money. This is so clumsy. And uh, goes to the uh, base camp at Mount uh, Everest and goes to the treks up to the first base camp. And then he makes the second base camp. And then his or her uh, oxygen uh, has to be put on to go further and he goes or she goes to one more base camp. And anyway, that's it. He can't go to the fourth or the fifth or how many base camps there are, how many camps there are along the route up to the top. Uh, and uh, maybe he can't, he, maybe that person can't find a Sherpa to carry him up to the top like Sir Edmund Hillary did. But anyway, uh, that person's a, a success because uh, that person tried. And, and to me, that person, he never, never got to the top of Mount Everest, but that person's a huge success, but he tried. So that's, that's the key. You've got to try in life. And oftentimes Amen. You don't, and oftentimes you don't succeed, but at least you made the effort. And with that... If I, did, if I did not accomplish great things, I died in their pursuit. Christian Patel, thank you for the idea. John Rubino, thank I you love, for the quotes. I, I love Christian Patel. I love Todd Neff. I love all my students.